there we go. Good evening, everyone. We are at another, well, it's Monday still, right? It's Monday? Okay. We are at another week. It's Tuesday. It's it's Tuesday. I think no, it's still it's Monday. Tuesday. Yeah, Monday. Uh, um, last week, the kids, when it was Saturday, I said, well, let's do our Saturday routine with uh, pancakes. And the kids were like, it's Wednesday. I'm like, no, it's it's Saturday. So no, I didn't say it was. Our, our, our not knowing the day is getting worse, I think. No. But let us begin our evening prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong. And graciously keep me this night, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. And for Compline today, here we go. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and your truth at the close of the day. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts, words, and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ in whom we are forgiven. And I declare that forgiveness to you this night in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We rise now in the peace of Christ. We rest now in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. Do not worry saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear? Indeed, your heavenly father knows that you need all these things, but strive first for the dominion and righteousness of God. And all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, Matthew 6, 20, 31 through 34. For our restless souls tonight, tonight is, is, um, is kind of a heavy one, um, just to let you all know that. And just some moments of history that as he goes through Germany, this is a sabbatical journey. Today, it's called Absence in Presence. Today, I had a very long train ride. My friend Tom Day was on the platform at the Berlin station. As Tom and I traveled by subway and car to Tom's home, he told me about his son's sudden and tragic death at his university. What incredible grief. A brilliant life cut short. When we got to the house, Helga was there to welcome us. I can hardly believe how they were surviving this enormous tragedy. Their son Lars, the pride and joy of their lives, had died suddenly and totally unexpectedly. Dot, dot, dot. After breakfast and the Eucharist, Tom and Helga took me to, on a tour of Berlin. Visiting Berlin is quite an emotional experience for me. There are many familiar names and images. Brandenburger Tor, the Reichstag, Unter den Linden, and so on. But seeing these things all at once in their natural setting and hearing Tom and Helga speak about them was like seeing my, my own life from a new perspective. The end of the Weimar Republic, the burning of the Reichstag, Hitler's coming to power, the Second World War, and the hatred of Jews the Russian invasion of Berlin and the destruction of the city, the allied control of the city in three sectors, the division into East and West Berlin, the building of the Berlin Wall in 1961 and John F. Kennedy's words, ich bin ein Berliner, I'm a Berliner, which also meant, by the way, my little aside, I am a jelly donut. 
He was beloved even as his try to be in solidarity in 1963. The taking down of the wall and the end of the end of communism, the decision in 1990 to make Berlin the center of the German government again, and the total rebuilding of the city. All of these events I lived from a distance, and many of them I remember as significant moments of my life. Now I could see it all in stone and live it all again within a few hours. It was history coming alive. I deeply feel my own responsibility. It does make a difference how I live my life. It does make a difference where I go, with whom I speak and what I write. Yes, my life is very short and seems so insignificant in the context of our immense universe. But seeing what I saw today and hearing what I heard today, I experience a great desire to live with much more integrity, as much clarity and as much courage as I can. All through the day, we walked, talked about Tom and Helga's son. He was very ple present and very absent. It feels as if I came just too late to meet an exceptionally beautiful young man full of life, full of love, and full of hope. With enormous pain, I feel some of it in my own heart. I cannot even fathom what Tom and Helga were feeling as they showed me the city and as we walked and talked together. The list of all the history that he put down, not just, you know, as the rise of the Third Reich and during the Civil War, the, the World War II, Russians invasion, the building of the wall, the tearing down of the wall, the rebuilding of the city. I mean, what, 50, 60 years of history there that are just such significant events. And, and I, I kind of like how he's pointing out the, you know, they're impactful to us. I mean, I didn't live in Berlin. I wasn't even alive during the, Civil, the Second World War or during John F. Kennedy. I do remember the Berlin Wall coming down. I remember when Gorbachev came to actually visit Minnesota when I was in, I think, middle school, high school. Um, I remember parts of these stories. I also know of a wall that went up in Jerusalem after I was there um, and some world history events. So you think about these major events in world history and the unfolding of them. Um, as they happened and then the unfolding of them as they were taken down and um, life went on. And the distant, they had an impact on the whole world, even though they were a world away from us. And for Tom and Helga, and other Germans, I mean, they were right there. For all those that died during the Holocaust, for all those who, um, you know, were in the Battle of the Bulge and were those who liberated the camps and met the Russians. Um, as World War II ended. I mean, we've lived through some significant pieces of history. And I think I'm, I'm like now in, and I've been thinking a lot about significance of life and what, what is vocation and how do we live, um, how do we make a difference? Is it, you know, with the little ones or is it with our impact of our friends and our church community? Um, but you see how history does come alive and our responsibility of things that are unfolding or systems that are changing does make a difference. We do what we can and it makes a difference. We live with integrity and it makes a difference. Um, our lives might be short and insignificant, but at the same time, they can do so much to make a difference. And it's humbling and it's empowering and it's where we're at again. Um, I know people have made a lot of parallels. I'm not gonna do that tonight. Um, our restless souls though, are one in which, I mean, the last pandemic that was at this scale um, was a hundred years ago impacted America in this way as far as the number of deaths. Um, what are the stories of the next 50 years? And are we living in the midst of them right now? 
I think we are, um, which is why our lives make a difference. And then sandwiching the story in the midst of the grief. So like all these world history things that matter, but what also matters is the grief of this family, of Tom and Helga, as they have just had their lives ripped open by losing their son. And so world events matter equally to the events in our, each of our lives and the loved ones we lose either too soon or after a life lived long and well. Um, our world and our life is a lot about loss, but in the middle of the loss, why we grieve it so much is because it was lived and because it mattered and um, because it was a gift from God. So what I chose tonight from our song, for our song is actually from our um, Holy Week music. And it's Ah Holy Jesus. I'm just in a, that kind of mood tonight, so bear <laughs> with me, I guess.
I know that we are in a Easter season, well, Pentecost season, but there are moments that we do need to remember that, but for the grace of God, where would we be? But for the grace of God, what would our hope be? And while our restless souls struggle with what we are experiencing and living in the world, that we have a God that knew that, that knows that, that went to the cross, a one-time event that we thankfully receive the benefits of every single day because we have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, which brings the forgiveness to us. And the real difference is made there so that we can then live our lives freely for the good of our neighbor and our souls can rest in that promise. Into your hands, O oh Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O oh Lord, God of truth. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Guide us waking, O oh Lord, and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Hear my prayer, O Lord, listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness, I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, give rest to the weary, Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, comfort the afflicted, shield the joyous, all for your love's sake. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now in peace I will lie down and sleep. You alone, O God, make me secure. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.